clouds will increase as the day goes on. Highs will be in the low to mid 70s. And then I expect to see a chance for a few showers tonight, especially late tonight. Tomorrow, scattered showers, mostly cloudy and back into the 60s. I'm Cairo 7, Pinpoint Meteorologist Nick Allard. It is partly sunny and 64 degrees in downtown Seattle. I'm Ursula Roitine. Listen on demand. Go to MyNorthwest.com and click podcasts. Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk. Powered by the Pacific Northwest. The Big Lead is brought to you by 3010 Weight Loss for Life. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is The Big Lead. Coming to you from the Carter Subaru Studio. Streaming on Facebook Live. Welcome. Welcome to The Big Show we got a lot of news to get to today. It's a very, very busy afternoon. Let's get right into the big lead. The big lead. I sense a Dory rant coming on. Well, I do have trouble understanding this big push. A Seattle congresswoman is leading the charge, but most of the Democrat presidential candidates are also adopting this that we need to forgive college student loan debt. Pramila Jayapal signed on with Bernie Sanders yesterday. We told you about this yesterday. And this is one that I just simply cannot understand how this has gotten so much traction. I don't hear anybody saying that us poor homeowners who bought more house than we can afford, why don't we just forgive all of our mortgages? You bought a Mercedes when you could only afford a Hyundai? Well, we should just forgive your car loans. Write them off. It's a write-off. And now we're doing the same thing with college student loans. So, as I've said, I believe that any kid can work their way through college. I know it's a lot more expensive than it was back when I was a kid. But I also know that if you sacrifice and you give up your Friday and Saturday nights, starting when you're 13 years old, that you can start saving for your own college. Maybe you have to go to community college for a couple of years before you transfer to a four-year. Maybe you can't go to parties in college. Maybe you got to work full-time. Work full-time while in college? Yeah, some of us did that. It's possible. It's very possible to do. And then there's another approach. I didn't have this option as a kid, but I had this option as a parent. When our girls were born, they have something here in Washington called the the GET, Guaranteed Education Tuition. And my wife and I, we enrolled all three of our daughters in the GET program when they were born. And yeah, money was really tight when we had our first baby. And we had to sacrifice a lot. But every month for 18 years, we paid in to buy their tuition. And as I mentioned yesterday, we had a deal with our our girls. Uh, We'll pay your in-state tuition if you want to go to a private university, if you want to go to an out-of-state university. We can probably help you with the difference as a loan, but it will be a loan, and you will pay us back. And I, I was thrilled when our daughters, two went to the University of Washington and one was a kook. Because they didn't have to be in debt to mom and dad. But that was the the choice. As as a kid, I had to work my way through. As a parent, I, you know, my wife and I sacrificed a lot so that we could pay for our girls. But it, it hurts a lot less if you amortize it over 18 years instead of just Figuring out when they're 18 years old, my gosh, how do we come up with this big lump sum? The point is, there are a lot of different ways that you can get your kids through college or that kids can get themselves through college. But this attitude among the Democrats, 
that, well, these kids, they got more college than they could afford, and now they're drowning in a sea of debt, so we should just forgive it. It is the biggest deadbeat loser approach to life imaginable. You get yourself in a problem, and government will rescue you by just making other people pay for it. And their plan is they want to tax every single stock market transaction. So anybody who buys or sells, they would put a tax on that transaction. And that's how they're going to pay for all these deadbeat losers who entered into debt that they now can't afford. So other people will cover it. And they're big on on reparations right now. Elizabeth Warren, a couple of days ago, she floated the idea of reparations for gay people in our country. A lot of candidates, Kamala Harris has said we need reparations for African Americans in our country. How about reparations for us parents who paid for our own kids' college? If you're going to force taxpayers to forgive the loans of all of these other kids. Because they entered into an agreement, a contract, to pay back the loan. And now, and what this is, it's so transparent. Reparations for African Americans, they want to buy the African American vote. Reparations for gays. Elizabeth Warren wants to buy the gay vote free college right off your loans they want to buy the votes of these college students and I find it disgusting I find it absolutely reprehensible as I said Pramila Jayapal she is uh, one of the leaders in the house on this the Seattle Democrat she told Q13 News that this would be great for the economy if we just write off all these debts. The studies show that if we did that, canceled all the $1.5 trillion in debt, it would actually be a $1 trillion boost to the economy over the next 10 years. And that is because when people are paying that debt, they are not buying other things. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. So in other words, you should be able to take on debt you can't afford, whine about it, have some Democrat come and rescue you, and then you'll buy other stuff. And why would they think that they could afford other stuff if the attitude is, well, I'll just have somebody rescue me when I buy more than I can afford? I hate to tell people this. Not everybody needs to go to to Duke or to Stanford. You don't need to go to the University of North Carolina and pay out-of-state tuition. Maybe you don't even need a college education. Maybe a trade school would do you better. And, And maybe it's not a wise decision to come out of college with $30,000, dollars $100,000 in debt. But the key word there is decision. It is a decision that people make. And now this attitude that we'll just buy the votes. Uh, Chris Vance also talked to Q13 News. Bernie Sanders and the socialist wing of the Democratic Party keeps coming up with these ideas like uh, free college and Medicare for all and paying off student debt. And all of them are dependent upon raising taxes on the rich. Well, you can't keep doing that forever. The numbers just don't add up. And we are $22 trillion in debt. Yeah, and that's our biggest shame as a nation. It's our biggest threat as a nation. Is And President Trump has added $3 trillion to the debt. Obama added $9 trillion to the debt. In that regard, they were both horrible. But we can't just write it off like the, the college loan people want to do bernie sanders bottom line is we should not be punishing people for getting a higher education it is time to hit the reset button oh and that right there that's 
more illustrative of any other eight-second soundbite of why socialism is by losers and for losers. Listen to the wording here once again. Bottom line is we should not be punishing people for getting a higher education. It is time. Okay. We're punishing people because we're asking them to pay off a loan that they entered into a contractual agreement to obtain. Are we punishing people when they by asking them to pay their home mortgage? Are we punishing people when we why don't we forgive all credit card debt? But but before you do, let us know that you're going to do it so we can all max out our credit cards. Let's buy a bunch of stuff we don't want or need, but we know that it's free because other people pay for it. Why don't, you, why don't you just pay off all credit card debt in the nation? Here's AOC. And it was literally easier for me to become the youngest woman in American history elected to Congress than it is to pay off my student loan debt. <laughs> so it's unbelievable. We are encouraging people to be deadbeat losers. That has become the mantra of, uh, of the party, the Democrat Party. And locally, Seattle Congressman Pramila Jayapal is leading the way. What do you think about this move to write off all student loan debt in the country? Uh, the Online Trading Academy text line is 98973. That's 98973. Up next in the big lead. The big lead. Bizarro world. We have a gang war here in Seattle. And it's bad. We had shootings in White Center this weekend. The rampant drug use everywhere has absolutely led to the gangs that are trying to protect their turf selling drugs. And so you had uh, three shootings in White Center. King County Sheriff Mitzi Johanknik now says that they're going to have more patrols in White Center. By the way, Mitzi Johanknik still has not honored her promise to come on our show. She, what? Yeah. We're still working on it. Well, I've been told she will. She said she'll pick up the phone anytime. Yeah. She lied to me. She absolutely lied okay, to me. Okay, well, we're working on it. We're going to we're going to make it happen. Okay. All right. Uh so she says she's going to am- amp up the emphasis patrols because of all the gang activity. By the way, did you hear what they're doing in Fresno, California, where there's a horrible gang problem? The Fresno City Council yesterday, it was close. It was a 3 to 2 vote. But they decided to fund a new program that's going to pay gang members to not shoot each other. I am not making this up. They are going to identify who some of the most violent gang members are. They're in Fresno. And they're going to enroll them in this program. And if they vow to not engage in violent activity, the taxpayers will give them Anywhere from three hundred to a thousand dollars per month, depending on how violent they were. So the more violent you were, the more money you will make by not shooting people. <laughs> this is the kind of insanity. I mean, this is just barely a step removed from the college loan forgiveness. We are rewarding people for engaging in just being a normal, lawful, law abiding citizen. And we are rewarding people for entering into college loans they can't afford. It's all insane. Speaking of insane, next up in the big lead. The big lead. Top trending. I mentioned this yesterday, and there's now more audio to just bolster it. You want to talk about fake news. There's this woman who's been an advice columnist for Elle magazine, E. Jean Carroll. And she has a new book coming out. And in the book, she talks about how Donald Trump uh, sexually assaulted her in the mid-90s. And as she does all of these interviews, it's clear that she is a very mentally unbalanced person. And that's why 
The New York Times slow rolled their coverage on her accusations. The ABC, NBC, CBS, they have not covered her. But I'm telling you, CNN and MSNBC, they can't get enough of this nut. They have her on all of their shows. I played one cut for you yesterday. She said that she wouldn't go after Trump for the most bizarre of reasons. Would you consider uh, bringing a, a rape charge against Donald no. Trump for this? Why not? I would find it disrespectful to the women who are down on the border who are being raped around the clock down there without any protection. They're young women. They, you know, tried to come into the country. They're, they're, as you know, they're there by the thousands. The women have very little protection there. Okay, so she's not going to go after Trump because it'd be disrespectful to women getting raped at the border. I mean, she's just really mentally way off. But CNN had her on all their shows yesterday. It was all fairly playful. Um, oh, it was charming. It was yes. exciting. Remember what Donald Trump was like in 95, 96. And, and so she's describing that Trump was at, uh, what's that, Bergman, Bergdorf store? I don't know what it's called. But some high-end store. And he asked for her help in picking out a gift for a woman. And she says that's when he attacked her. He was like a Shakespearean character, walking up and down the street, always had a word for everybody. Well, you remember, Allison? I remember. Well, everybody. He was charming. Absolutely. So charming. this was all fun and games. You were I laughing I loved along. it. Okay, she loved it, but she says that Trump then uh, pinned her against a wall in a dressing room. But listen to this. Allison Camerata on CNN, she gives the narrative instead of letting the guest, and she's putting all these words that are wrong into the guest's mouth because CNN is so excited about a sexual assault allegation against the president. And so he pinned you against the wall, he ripped off your tights, and... Not all the way off, just down. Down. Okay, so Elsie Camero got that wrong. So, but, but instead of just asking her, so what happened? She said, well, he ripped off your tights, right? And then listen, listen to her. This is the CNN host. He pulled down his pants. He No, just unzipped. He unzipped his pants. And... This is beyond sexual. I mean, legally, he raped you. I don't use the word. I have difficulty with the word. I, I... Okay, so... <laughs> so the CNN host got everything wrong. Uh, and the guest, who could have just told the story, but it wasn't quite sensational enough. And then listen to on Anderson Cooper last night. You don't feel like a victim. I was not thrown on the ground and ravished. Which the word rape carries so many sexual connotations. This was not. This was not sexual. For it just it it hurt. It just what it just you know. But I think most people think of rape as a. I mean, it is a violent assault. It is not. I a think sexual. most people think of rape as being sexy. Mm -hmm. Let's take a short break. Think of the fantasies. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, we'll talk more on the other wow. side. Wow, you're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> Wow. I mean, Anderson Cooper had no idea what to do with that. She thinks rape is sexy, that's about fantasies. And I mean, the way he stam I've never heard him stammer, toss into a break before. Assault, it is not. I think most people rape. think of rape as being sexy. Mm. Let's take a short break. Think of the fantasies. Mm. We're going to take a quick break. If you can stick around, we'll talk more on the other side. You're fascinating to talk to. <laughs> By the way, CNN has removed that from their online posting of this interview because they're talking to a mentally ill person. They know it. They know it. But that's what passes for journalism in the fake news era that we're in. Let's just talk to the mentally ill who think that rape is sexy and a fantasy. It's unbelievable. That is your big lead for today. The Big Lead on Cairo Radio. Yesterday, we told you the story about an unbelievable email that a local reporter received from a King County Municipal Court spokesperson. We're going to talk to Brandy Cruz about it next on the Dory Monson Show. This hour of the Dory Monson Show is brought to you by Insulation.